The first tip I have for you is to use less study resources. I'm sure you're shocked by this advice and you're probably asking, how can I pass the exam or avoid failing the exam if I'm using less study resources? And the reason is you don't want to overwhelm yourself with so many resources without focusing on one. I've seen so many students who go and read these long experiences of uh, applicants who passed step one and scored high and they start collecting so many books, question banks, video resources and at the end of their studying period they haven't studied any of these resources very well. The key to passing the step one is focusing on one or two resources, mastering them, knowing the information inside these resources and then going to the exam. So especially that now step one is pass fail, I recommend you focus on one or two resources take a deep dive into these resources, understand everything in there, master the information in there, and then go for the exam. And if you're asking what are these resources that I can use, I recommend you use UWorld and First Aid, and maybe more resources if you had time. But first, focus on mastering UWorld and First Aid. And if you don't have time for both resources, maybe focus on UWorld because it's questions, it's a better learning strategy, and this is how the exam, the exam is questions, not a book. So if you don't have time for both UWorld and First Aid, maybe use UWorld, especially that UWorld has explanations while First Aid is a review book. So in summary, focus your time on one or two resources and don't overwhelm yourself. The second tip to avoid failing the step one exam is to do assessment tools. I'm shocked that I continuously see students who go to the step one exam without doing an assessment tool. Assessment tools are extremely valuable because they can predict the future for you with certain margin of error. So assessment tools are not 100% accurate, but they can give you an idea of how much you'll be scoring on the exam and whether you'll pass the exam or not. So I highly recommend you do assessment tools, including MBMEs, UL self-assessment, and not necessarily a day before the exam because that will not help you. Do assessment tools way ahead of the exam day. And if you see that there is a problem, you try to fix it and continue to do these assessment tools until you feel very comfortable with passing the exam before you go to the actual exam day. The third advice to avoid failing the step one exam is to be realistic. You can't expect to pass the step one exam after studying for one week. So you have to be realistic with how much time you have and when are you doing your exam? Because I've seen these students who come to me and ask me, I have two weeks only to prepare for the exam and the last time I studied anatomy and physiology was five years ago. So you have to be realistic and understand that this takes time. Even studying for a step one to be pass fail, it takes time. Students now think that it's easier to get the step one done. And I agree that it's easier to get a passing score compared to 250s and 260s that students needed to get in the old days. Actually, the passing score increased compared to when step one was not pass fail. So this sense of comfort and that the exam is easy now because it's pass fail is deceiving students and making them feel that they need less time and they don't need to study as hard because the exam is pass fail and that is wrong. I highly recommend you study well for the exam. Imagine it's scored. You don't have to score to 60s on your assessment tools before you go to the exam, but score well above the passing score so you guarantee a pass on the exam. And remember the information included in step one will be tested in a different format on step two. So if you're preparing well for your step one, you're building a good base for your step two CK and the score on the step two CK exam will be very important for the residency application. The fourth tip I have for you is study techniques. I can't emphasize enough how important are the study techniques when you are actually studying. I've seen so many students who come to me and tell me, well, I'm studying for 12 hours a day and I still can't remember the information or my scores are not improving on the assessment tools. And the reason is poor study techniques. I made a detailed course on how to study effectively for exams that talk about concepts such as active learning, space repetition, memory palaces, mnemonics, and all the techniques that you need to ace your exam. Also having a detailed study plan, study schedule, optimizing the study hours that you have, minimizing distractions, studying up to 12 hours, all these are discussed in my course on how to study for exams and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. And always remember all our courses are 100% refundable if you're not satisfied. Also if you need one-on-one -on -one help from a tutor who can guide you through the process, what resources can you use, uh, what study techniques, study strategies, create a study plan and study schedule for you or just explain topics that are difficult to understand on the exam rather than you spending hours trying to find an answer on Google, the tutor can help explain the high yield concept to you, explain these topics so you can understand it and ace it on the exam. 
So if you need any help from us, check out our USMLE tutoring services and I'll leave the link for these services in the description below. And my final advice to you to avoid failing on the step one exam is to solve questions. Solve as many questions as you can. If you're using UWorld as a study resource, that would not be a problem because you already uh, have solved over 3,700 questions which are included for the step one. But if you're not using UWorld, try to solve as many questions as you can. Because the step one exam is not only a test of your knowledge, of your medical knowledge, it includes multiple skills that you need to grow while you're studying for your exam looking at the different pieces of information, focusing on certain types of information and ignoring others, looking at the answers, analyzing the questions, and these skills don't come in a day or two. That's why I recommend studying from your world or another question bank, which can get you in the mood of the real exam from day one, and study your world or another question bank in the tutor mode. I highly recommend you study it in the tutor mode because again, you will be getting in the mood of the exam from the first day. And I highly recommend you check out the video I have on how to study UWorld for step one because this video will give you the secrets on how to effectively study from question banks. Question banks are a great resource to prepare for an exam, but you have to know how to use them. And I'll leave the link for that video in the cards above and in the description below. Before we end this video, make sure to check out my Biostatistics USMLE course, which will help you ace the biostatistics part of the USMLE exam. This part is generally a tough part for medical students they're not familiar with, so this course will help you with everything you need. And as I said, this course is 100% refundable if you're not satisfied. Also, if you need one-on-one -on -one help to guide you with the USMLE step one preparation, what resources to choose, create a study plan, study schedule, or explain difficult concepts to you, help you understand what is high yield, what is low yield, check out our USMLE tutoring services, and I'll leave the links for that in the description below. If you find any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. If you still have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or feel free to reach out to us on our email, info at thematchguy.com, my Instagram or Twitter at Malka Asad, or my Facebook page, Malka Asad MD. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and good luck on your exam.